How's it going tonight, Eddie? I'm very, very, very good. I'm really looking forward to tonight. I feel like in Devin Haney, we really have the future in our hands. I just a little bit nervous because he's got a really tough fight and I just hope he looks as good as we know he is. How did the Haley deal come to be? Well listen, we want to sign all the top young fighters. And if you look at the landscape in American boxing, and you wanted to sign a top young fighter that hadn't quite made it to world championship level yet, who would you try and sign? Devin Haney would be top of your list. So he was our target and we got him. And I'm really, really pleased because I feel like we have the next American superstar. But he's 20, right? He's had 21 fights, he may lose tonight. But they want to go into all these fights and keep testing him. I hope he looks sensational and I hope we get some great traction and a lot of fun with Devin Haney. So you're opening up cities in boxing where there wasn't much boxing yeah. to begin with. Are you feeling some resistance from American promoters? Oh yeah, massive, yeah, yeah. Of course. No one wants us here, I wouldn't want me here. If I was Bob Arum, if I was Al Heyman, I would have a picture up of me on the wall and I'd throw darts here every day, right? Because I'm a nightmare for these guys, because I'm young, I'm fresh, I work very hard, but the good news for them is, I'm a novice in the US market. So, although I think we've had a good start, we've got a long way to go. We've got to understand the areas better, we've got to keep delivering good fights, we've got to keep finding out what works, what doesn't work. We've got to keep working, we've got to keep trying, and we'll get there because we're very good at what we do. But, you know, it's not going to come overnight, and we're learning everywhere we go. And um, again, we're here tonight in Maryland. Never been here before for a fight. It's a great arena, of course, Usyk is supposed to be fighting here. The big Ukrainian community as well. We're just trying to have fun. You know, we want to make events fun. We want to make them sexy. We want to make it boxing cool again. You know, it's very difficult to do because I think there's a lot of work to do and you've got so many sports out here that boxing is right down the bottom in terms of desirability from the fans and we've got to try and change that. Do you feel like they're trying to freeze you out of the Yeah, of course. Because when the big baby match fell apart, yeah. they seem very reluctant yeah. to help. Of course, so no one, if you give me a leg up, you're making a rod for your own back, right? So if you're top ranked, or you're Heyman, or you're these guys, the last thing you want to be doing is helping Eddie Hearn get on. You want to be blocking me, you want to be stopping me. And I understand that, you know. I, I think it's a bit sad, but I get it, you know? They don't want me to succeed. The same thing happened in the UK. When I started in the UK, all the promoters tried to freeze me out, tried to block me, and we took over. And that's the plan in America as well. And that's the plan worldwide. So yeah, we have a global plan that we're working on. America is going to be a huge part of our business. And the, you know, the anti-Joshua, Jarrell Miller stuff was testing. You know, it wasn't easy. Yeah. Few sleepless nights. But we got there, you know, we, we kept calm, we delivered. And now next week we have a huge event at Madison Square Garden. Have you spoken to Miller since the... Uh, I haven't. He texted me a couple of times. I haven't replied to him. Um, I really want Jarrell Miller to come out and tell the truth. This is what I feel he needs to do. Because you can't come out after one failed test and say, I've never taken anything. I swear, I've never. And then the next two come in and you failed them again for two other substances. And then go, oh, I messed up. Yeah, it's like, no, no, just tell people you cheated. Right? People will respect you more. Do you know what I mean? Like when you commit a crime, you have to come out and you have to hold your hands up. Right? It's like when you hand yourself in to the police. If you hand yourself in and you go, all right, if you stand there and fight and deny it and have a shootout, the penalty is going to be ten times worse. So you have to come out, you have to say, oh, I wanted to win so badly, I took the wrong advice, I took all this stuff, and I, I know I have to pay my price. That's it. I don't see that. All I see is, oh, there's stuff you don't know about Barda. No, fuck off, mate. You're, you're sticking needles in yourself. You know what I mean? Like, how clear has it got to be? And I like Jarrell Miller. You know what I mean? I helped him get to... It's what's so frustrating. I gave him the opportunity of a lifetime. And he messed it up. And actually, AJ... He's very forgiving. If you listen to his interviews, he says, I don't see the point in kicking a man when he's down. He messed up. A massive opportunity. That's the punishment. You know? You've got to be punished by the commission. But ultimately, he's messed up an opportunity of a lifetime. Ten million dollars. Haven't he? Ten million. No, not quite. No, no, no. no. A lot of money, though. A lot of money. Yeah. Have you not answered this text on purpose? 
I'm not happy with it. For a few reasons. One, because of the position I got him to. But two, because he's cheating. And this is not a game of tennis. This isn't a game of golf. This isn't the Tour de France. This is, the aim of this sport is to do damage to your opponent. I class Anthony Joshua as a friend of mine, right? So what he was trying to do was take illegal substances to damage Anthony Joshua, right? And I think that's really bad. No, right? And what happened, would have happened in that fight if we didn't do part of the test. So Anthony would never quit. Anthony could have got hurt in that fight. Anthony could have got damaged in that fight, physically. No? So we've got to take this very seriously. Do you think we're at a point where each promotion company runs a division? Yes, yeah. yeah. Well Promotional company or network. It's been like that for quite a long time. I remember when I first started being involved with the Super 6, and I used to go to meetings with HBO, and they'd say, we're invested in these divisions. Right? And I never used to really understand it. I thought, you should be invested in all divisions. All it means is if you've got those fighters, it's so much easier to make the fight than the round robin. If you look at the zone with the middleweights, you know, they've got Canelo, Danny Jacobs, Golovkin, Demetrius Andre. If you look at PBC with the welterweights, they've got Furman, Pacquiao, Spence, Porter. Yeah? So, you are right, you know, there are certain uh, networks. Again, like, I don't know, another one. Super Phantomweights. We've got Danny Roman, we had TJ Deheny. Golden Boy have got Ray Vargas, he's on the zone. So, yeah, you know, that's just how it works out. And obviously when there's a chance to make so many in-house fights, it's a lot easier because you take away the politics and all the things that fans don't like about boxing. You think certain boxers will have to change the mode of the big fight. So you say Trump is with top rank. Yeah, that's interesting, you know, I mean, it's a good question. And, you know, I, I like him Charlo with Crawford. Charlo can't fight the mega fights and fight for world championships unless he's on the zone. Right? Crawford can't fight the mega fights unless he fights the Showtime fighter. It's difficult. It's difficult because, you know, as a promoter, you want to give the fighters the biggest fights and it's difficult if they're on a different network.